was going to make that he stole from me was that I've been sleeping with the children's pastor for 13 and a half years. And not 14. We've been in ministry together 14, but we weren't married the first six months. So just getting that right out of the way. But for 13 and a half years, I've been trying to figure out how to communicate how I feel about being a pastor's wife. And it's hard. And so I feel like I'm not alone. Sometimes it's hard being the spouse. It's hard being the one that maybe isn't the pastor. Well, not maybe, isn't the pastor. And so I, when we were talking about this class, I said, well, let me talk to some people. And so I've been talking for the last month, I think, to probably around 20 spouses, husbands of pastors, wives of pastors. And it amazed me the things that kept popping up. It was the same things over and over that wives from all across the country, husbands across the country told me. And so as I started putting them together and I'm looking at the list and I'm, oh, this goes with this and this goes with that. And it, and it was amazing to me the exact same things that people kept saying. So before we start, I just wanted to read this verse to you in Genesis. That's why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and they become one flesh. See, I don't think that you can be a ministry couple and both of you not be called to that ministry. Some spouses have to work, other, or like to work, or have to work, or whatever, other jobs. Some don't. Some stay at home. I've been kind of in every season working other jobs that weren't kids' ministry, staying at home with our kids, homeschooling our kids, working here now this last year with Scott has just been amazing, great season. So the first thing, I didn't put them really in order of importance, but this one is pretty important. The first thing is that you need to know, your spouse wants you to know, all the socks need to make it into the hamper. That's very, very, very important, right? All the five wives in the room are like, yeah. But in reality, the important one, this is the one that came up the absolute most. God called me too. When I was in fifth grade, God called me into ministry, and I knew my whole life I was going to serve God in ministry. And that didn't change just because I got married to a pastor. And God called me as much as he called Scott. And when we got married and we became one flesh, I'm still called. I'm not, that doesn't change. And so all of the different spouses that I've been talking to have said this. I'm called too, and sometimes it's hard to communicate that, that I, that I need to be fulfilled in ministry as well. So help your wife, help your husband fulfill his calling as well. If that calling is to be home with the kids, if it's to be in, more involved at church, if it's to be involved in different areas of children's ministry or worship or whatever it is, help them figure that out and talk to them and figure out what that means, what that looks like for you as a couple. And a, f a few months ago, because we've been here only a year, a few months ago, someone was introducing me to someone in the church and they said, Hi, this is, this is uh, Pastor Scott's wife. And I don't think that the person introduced me was one of our greeters. I don't think they even knew what my name was. And so that's probably why they did it. But so I just said, yeah, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Pastor Scott's wife. And when on, somebody overheard the conversation and said, hey, does that bother you? <laughs> Do you does that? And I said, what? Does what bother me? Because I didn't even know what they were saying. He said, does that bother you when someone says, hey, here's Pastor Scott's wife? And I said, oh, well, let let me think about that for a second, because I hadn't, here we are 14 years down the road, hadn't even thought about it before. And I said, no, you know, it really doesn't bother me because we're the same. And so that's kind of been our outlook on it from the beginning. And I just hadn't ever really thought about, oh, yep, I'm Pastor Scott's wife. So now I kind of make jokes sometimes about, maybe I should just put that on my name tag at church in the morning. Yeah, Hi, I'm Pastor Scott's wife. So... It's not a big deal, but sometimes it is. Some, to some spouses, that is a big deal that they kind of lose their identity. So just communicate with each other. That's the most important thing. The next thing is I need him to put me in my place. And my place is second, only to God. And what I wanted to mention this morning is that doesn't mean 
second to what he's doing for God. I'm not second to what he's doing for God. I'm not second to the things that make up our ministry, our calling. I'm second to God, to his relationship with God, to his, between him and God. That's the only thing I'm second to. And sometimes it's easy to lump into that calling the things we're doing. But I'm not made up of who I'm doing, and I so appreciated Manny's word yesterday. That's not my identity. Children's ministry is not my identity. So those things that I'm doing in ministry, that's not who I am. So that I'm not second to that. I'm second to God. And then our kids come next, and then ministry. And so that's so important that even though God's our first priority, that's, a, that's it. Nothing else can come up in between you and your spouse. No matter if you both work other jobs and do children's ministry as a volunteer, or if you're one of you is in children's ministry, or both of you are in different ministries, if your husband's a different pastor on staff, however that looks for you, your relationship as husband and wife has to come second only to God. And so one way we do this is date night. We, we love date night. And some of the edge students are smiling because they watch our kids for us sometimes. And we so appreciate that. But we have, for as long as I can remember, at least once a month, we go on date night. And we have watched more stupid movies <laughs> because there's not a good movie to watch, but we're going to the movies because it's date night and we need something to do. But date night has to be priority. And we schedule it in on a Friday because Fridays are our day off and so those days are sacred. But date nights, we try to go on a trip every year. We went to Las Vegas this year. That was a lot of fun. I came out even. <laughs> Except then I went to the outlets and then I didn't, I, you know, but I had something to show for it, right? So we try to go on these trips. We try to go on these trips, just the two of us. We leave the kids at home. Other people can care for them, that's okay. And it's so important that you make those times with your spouse. Be predictable, let your kids know. I just appreciated Dan saying, his kids know he loves Sarah first. Our kids know Scott loves me first. And even though they're important, your husband-wife relationship has to be first. One thing that a pastor's wife, my pastor's wife, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, she said to me, to all of us pastor's wives last week, she said, find out where you're vulnerable and to communicate that to each other. Where do you feel like you need something? If you need affirmation, if you need encouragement, if I just needed you to say, hey, I'm pretty. <laughs> if I need you to watch, sometimes he just wants me to watch football with him. That's fine. But find out where you're vulnerable because if you need affirmation and somebody else is giving it to you, that's gonna pull your relationship apart. So be able to communicate with each other, hey, I just need you this, and, and work through that so that you have no areas of vulnerability in your marriage, because that's where the enemy is going to attack. So number four, I think. I wish you knew. We need to set up some boundaries. We need boundaries. And at church, at home, in the office, Wherever we're at, we need boundaries. And I will tell you, the few years we were at the national office, those were some of the hardest ones for me. Because across the nation, most children's pastors are female. And I'm sending my husband on a regular basis to their churches, to their districts, to their conferences. And he's around women all the time. And I had to work through that. And that's, that's something... It took a while, and we had a lot of conversations about it, but he was so good about setting up boundaries, and he, his admin would call and say, okay, who's picking him up? And if it was a female, okay, who's going to be with you when you pick him up? Who's going to dinner with you? And just making sure that it's not just assumed that he wasn't going to be by himself, but he, she made sure and he made sure, and I appreciated that, and I think that that's something that needs to be an open door. It needs to be a conversation that's ongoing. And you as pastors and as spouses, we need to be able to say to each other, I'm not okay with this person. Not you, I trust you, but this person, 
she doesn't set right in my heart, and I need you to be careful when you're talking with her. Don't put your hands on her arm. Don't give her a hug. Don't be alone with her. And I think that's okay for us as spouses to be able to say, hey, just watch. Just be careful. And it, it doesn't need to come across as you're doing something or, you know, stop flirting. That's probably not something you want to say. But have an open conversation going about the people that you are all around. Because sometimes your spouse can see things that you don't see. Sometimes you're just oblivious or I'm oblivious and we need people in our lives that can say, that's not a healthy situation. We need to fix this. What can we do to fix this? So at home, we wish that you would know we are a team too. Whether I stay home, whether your spouse stays home, whether your spouse works somewhere else, whether your sp spouse, like I do, works at the church, we're a team at home. So I know that it's such a long day. <laughs> when you come home from work, most of you want to sit on the couch. And here in our time zone, especially on Sundays, the TV goes on for football, which is great because I like football. But some spouses don't like football. So you have to just be careful with that. And we have had in the past conversations that go something like, hey, at bedtime, can you just handle one of, you know, which kid do you want? And we switch off and on. Or if he's really tired, okay, I'll, I got it. Or if I'm really tired, okay, I got it. And so our bedtime routine with the kids isn't that set. Some of you guys have really set bedtimes. But we take turns and we communicate, hey, tonight I just need a minute. Okay, I've got bedtime or those kinds of whatever the situation comes up, just communicate and be a team. Kind of going back to number one, put all those socks in the hamper. It's amazing to me how the hamper's here and all the clothes are right here. And not just Scott, mostly our kids. But it's just amazing to me. How does that happen? I don't, it's like right here. Anyway, oh, he's good. <laughs> One pastor's wife told me that she wished her husband knew that she wanted to be his biggest cheerleader. We want to encourage you. We want to cheer you on. We want to be hopefully not looking like this guy. But we want to be in your corner. And we want to be there for you when you, if you're down, if you need to be, if however we can help you, that's what we want to do. And sometimes... It's hard for us because you've been talking to people all day about different situations and then maybe come home and share them and then that's it. You don't want to talk about it anymore. But we want to be there to help you. So if you can just say, hey, it would really help me if you would and communicate those things clearly to each other. Hey, it would really help me today if you would. And I know for Scott, it's just have a pitcher of iced tea in the refrigerator. And for some reason, I can't keep an iced tea in the refrigerator. I don't know why. But that would really help him if he could get up in the morning and there's a glass of tea. And I know this. I just can't seem to get it. I don't know. <laughs> so we want to help you. We want to cheer for you. I'm not taking responsibility for this next slide. We wish you knew what happens when you assume. Don't assume that you know what we want to do at church. Sometimes we have to do things as spouses just because the need is there. I've needed to be nursery coordinator. I've needed to be early childhood. Right now I'm overseeing early childhood. I need to do that. Sometimes the need is there and we, have to, we help to fill that role. That's fine. But don't go through 15 years of ministry assuming that you know what your spouse really likes to do with ministry. Sometimes they don't like to do object lessons. Or they don't like to speak by themselves at camp. <laughs> Sometimes there's just different <laughs> things that spouses don't like to do. So communicate with each other. And that's probably that seems to be the main theme today is communicate. Just talk about it. Just talk about it. There's a couple more that I'm going to get through. And Dan touched on this as well. The kids and I are always watching. We want you to be the same at home. And... One uh, pastor spouse told me that it's hard to see at church on the weekends, on Wednesday nights, it's hard to see the anointing on that pastor and then come home not quite so anointed. 
if you understand what I'm saying. And we all have experienced that when we're at church, when we're operating in the ministry and we're on. We have our ministry faces on. We leave all the stuff that's bothering us at home. But then when we get home, we pick it right back up. And so together, I think it's for all, for all of us, for both husband and wife. We have to be the same at home. We have to talk with our kids at home the same way we talk with other kids on the weekend and intentional about loving them. And we have to talk with our spouse at home and we have to treat them the same. If, if Scott doesn't do this, but if he did, if he treated me all the way to church yelling at me and then we get out and suddenly we're surrounded by church people and now he's all nice and fun. He doesn't ever do that. But if he did, what does that tell me as his wife? That tells me I can't trust him because how do I know when he's ever being sincere if I know he's going to be this way here and then as soon as people are watching, he's another way. So we have to be very careful to be the same everywhere we go. Last one. We wish you knew how to fly a private plane so we could vacation wherever we wanted, whenever we wanted to. That would be really fun. We could just go wherever. So I want to pray for you as couples today. Because I feel like our enemy knows that if he can get in our marriage and put walls and put dividers and break down that communication, then eventually he's going to get to the whole thing, our kids, the ministry, all of it. And so I feel like today we need to just surround ourselves with prayer for our marriages. And some of you aren't even married yet. That's okay. But God has a plan for you and maybe eventually a spouse, so pray for that as well. But if you're married, if your spouse is here today, go ahead and pray with them. If you're not, if you're, I mean, if your spouse is not here, just pray with yourself and just ask God for his protection on your marriage. Because when the enemy comes into that marriage, it's only a matter of time. And that is my heart is for pastor spouses for pastors as well. But let me pray for you. God, I thank you for each of these pastors sitting in this room. Lord, I thank you for the call that you have put on our lives. And I ask today that you would strengthen marriages, that you would help them as they're setting boundaries, that you would help them as they are communicating. God, that seemed to be the word this morning is communicate with each other. And I just ask that we with open hearts would ask each other, what do you need from me? How can I help you be better? And Lord, I just pray that this would not cause dissension, that, but that this would open a door to stronger marriages. And we love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Amen.